I'm gonna settle this right now, okay? Anytime that there is something brought out, right? When you have a model of something and they bring out the new model, it's the updated version, right? So when God mm -hmm. made man, he had to bring out the new and improved model. And that's why he made woman, right? Because he had to upgrade it. Yeah, yeah, but he but so. he didn't he didn't use anything new. He took the rib from man. No, sir. Oh. No, sir. Come you on. Ain't a man God teaching the dinosaur. Exactly. We no, no, not he's from the rib Wait a minute, of a man. Miss Savvy, he is correct. He didn't use anything new, but he up he upgraded it. He gave us a womb. He gave us breasts. Come on. He gave Come us on. things that you guys could Come never on. have. That's why there was an upgraded version of the man. So right. And you mm. gotta realize. We, we closer than God than y'all are. So we didn't come from you. We came from the creator. So I want people to stop thinking that we came from the rib of a man. No, we yeah, didn't. But, but hold up, hold up, hold no, up. No, we did not. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. We all know with- So we're in a hybrid versions of men? We all know that. We, look, <laughs>
Oh, all right, here we go. I'm not even going to go. go. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, I do have a clothing brand that I just launched um, this past two weeks ago. It's called Hollywood Apparel. Um, that was That's my baby. I definitely built that from the ground up. I'm also a barber, stylist. I, I have a long list of things that I do, a personal trainer, but I love to help people. That's number one. I love helping people. I love entertaining. And lastly, me and my wife, we have a talk show that's doing great. And we just had our one-year anniversary. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds great. Savvy, what you been up to this week? How, how, how your week been? It's been pretty um slow and quiet and slow relaxing. And quiet. Two, yeah, two slow and that, quiet. Relaxing. Yeah, two things that doesn't fall into your bracket a lot. Slow and quiet. Right, right. So I have to take advantage of um, the slow and quietness of it all, right. you know. So I haven't, um, outside of just doing what I like to do, um, I haven't added nothing new onto my um, my project, anything like that. We're still working on the show in March and um, doing other things. I did go see um, the movie Guns and Graham um, this Sunday. It mm -hmm. was good. Y'all need to um, go check it out if y'all y'all haven't. It's still going to be in theaters um, this weekend coming up. Right. So y'all need to go out and support this movie before it goes to um, Atlanta. I think it's going to go to Atlanta, New York, and a couple of other places. Yeah. So right now they're doing a um, they're doing like a, a a city tour, like they're going to different cities to show it before it's really released in AMC's all over the place. Right. So, I think they've been having a lot of meet and greets as well with some of the cast members. Yeah. Yeah. As far as um, I see. So, I mean, it's a good movie. I mean, you need to go out and support the director, Mr. Larry Durr, D-E-R-R, because I'll be saying his name wrong. And um, right. all the, you know, up-and-coming actors. You got some big known actors in there. Y'all want to go out and support that. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Represent Baltimore. Yes, yes. And Black Arts. Of course. Yeah. A lot of top people in there. It's pretty good. One so home, I know a lot of close people to home wanted to, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, was, I know a lot of people was talking about um, this fight and making fun of um, this boxer. I didn't watch it to be honest, but I mean, did anybody else watch it? Did anybody else want to make a comment on it and talk about it? Because I, saw, people, I didn't watch crazy. it, but I saw some of the comments. And um, uh -huh. my thing about it, it you had to rem a lot of people failed to remember that it's. Um, it was a, a, a exhibition match. I didn't expect mm -hmm. anybody to win. Right. Um, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where I don't think it would politically be correct if somebody did win. It's right. one of those things where you had to, for me, I, I'm a WWE fan. So some watching the WWE, you can't have two of your biggest names out there fighting and somebody, and they win. You want them to, we want somebody to win, but what they usually do to play it along, they'll have somebody else break the match up and, and, and interfere. Well, in this case, it's boxing, so you don't have somebody to run in to interfere, but you had to put it as a tie. So that way, because again, it's an exhibition match. It's not one of those things where, because you don't want anybody, hey, man, uh, Mike Tyson whooped his ass. You know what I mean? You, oh, 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 what's that? Oh, my God, you beat Mike Tyson. No, you can't. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where we knew going in it was an exhibition match. So I figured, you know, the outcome would have probably been a tie. You know what I mean? So was it for charity? I believe it was. Yeah. I didn't. I don't pay yeah. too much attention to. But yeah. I believe it yeah. So I did. So I did watch the uh, watch the fight. Right. Uh, every single fight was for charity. They gave it to. I don't know what the organization was, but the fight with Nate Robinson, the basketball player. That I'm just gonna come out and say it. That was hilarious. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. And, I was gonna say it. I didn't see it. I just saw something right. like on Instagram and Facebook, and then I seen all these memes. So that's why I was so curious. And I'm like, why are these people making these memes about this man? Yeah. But yeah. then when I saw the little skits, I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. That was, it, it wasn't good. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. And yeah. people are so cruel and funny at the same time because yeah. it's like they making memes out of anything that they can with this man. It's, it's it, a lot. And what's good is, because right. you, you know that nowadays we deal with a lot of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And, you know, normally when a lot of people start bagging on you, that's what we call it down here, or talking about you and making memes, they will get depressed or, or irritated or upset. He's actually taking it very well. That's right. good. Yeah, he's actually taking it very well. And actually, me and my wife, we just talked about it on our talk show, too. Like, and I, I definitely feel like it was hilarious. It was it was funny. All right. So when do your talk show come on? 
Oh, so I, I show is every Sunday at 6 p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you see the fight, Ms. Fern? I did not, no. I am such, I, you know, I'm, I'm a sports mom. My kids play sports, like, and they're very good at it. Like, my, my youngest daughter got a full scholarship to college for her sport. My yes. son has gotten X to play, you know, professional um, arena football because he's such a great athlete. Right. And I am such, I am such a girl. I don't, I barely know how the ball goes. <laughs> <laughs> All the years that I've spent with my kids on the fields in dance competitions. I mean, they've done it. They played softball, baseball, football, basketball, uh, dance competitively. And I'm just like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they love it. I love it. But for me personally, I'm so not a sports person. Right, right. I love watching my kids, but, you know. Yeah, understandable. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, let's see. It's, it's, can a man, damn it, I keep losing it. Oh, it's a video. That's why. So it's, uh, when the woman, when the woman is the sole breadwinner in the household, uh, you know, how does the man feel if is he still does can he still feel like the head of the household and how does that affect the uh, household or the relationship? That's the topic we're trying to get into. So, yeah. you know, if you, your spouse, your significant other, she's the one running everything. And, and I'm basically basing it on male and female because, you know, usually and, you know, traditionally in society, um, Men are known to be the sole breadwinners. Men are known to be the one bringing in the bacon. And yeah. basically the wife stays home or the wife is, you know, a housewife. Now, there are a lot of men out there who are basically do the same thing. They housewife. But how does that affect them, you know, in terms of being um, the leader of their family or basically the, um, you know, how does that affect the relationship? Are you, you know, lack of a better word, do you feel like a bitch? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's one of those things. I mean, society has changed so much that it was one of those things I was thinking of. And, you know, when you go back into like, like, like scriptures and Bibles and, you know, stuff like that, uh, um, it all teaches the man to, to, to lead the family. You, you're, you're as a man, you're supposed to lead your family <laughs> into the yeah. kingdoms of heaven, you know, that, that kind of a thing, you know? So, yeah. and, or, you know, whatever, you, you know, religion you believe in, Basically, in my analogy, the, the uh, your, your whole fa your family is basically in a caravan or in a, in a minivan. You're the man. You're the one driving, and your spouse is the navigator. She's right next to you. She's also navigating the trip. You know, um, but in this case, you, the roles are switch. She's the one driving yeah. the car. You know, how does that feel? So I don't know. What you guys think? Oh, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Hey, you know, hey, this is why we're here. <laughs> you know, I always have a lot to say. Yeah. Um, well, for me personally, it comes down to respect. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. if you're with your partner, you have to respect one another. And, you know, um, I've been in a situation with my children's father where I was the sole breadwinner, but I didn't have respect for him because he wasn't holding me down the way I needed to be held down in terms of taking care of the house, making sure right. the kids were good, you know, making sure my life was a little bit easier for me to be able to go out and work those hundred hours a week, you know, right. cause it made more sense. I made more money. So it made more sense for me to be out working rather than paying daycare for us both to be out working. And we were actually would have been losing money. So right. it made more sense for me to go out and work. But if I'm coming home and I still now, still now have to cook, clean, take care of the kids, do the household chores after working a hundred hour a week, no, I'm not going to respect you. But I've also been in a situation where, you know, um, let's say we're going out to dinner with, you know, a bunch of friends or whatever. And I'm, of course, you know, I'm holding all the purse strings because I'm, I'm the one that has all the money. I'm sliding the credit card under the table to him or I'm giving him the money, you know, for him to pay so that it doesn't, you know, for it doesn't make purposes. him feel bad to stroke his ego a little bit. Do you right, know what I mean? Right. Um, because I do think that is important, but if I think if you have mutual respect, I don't think it would matter what your partner, who, what, which partner makes more money, you know, it, it comes down to, to respect and it comes down to, you know, making sure you just contribute your portion of what it is that you're, you know, that you need to contribute to the relationship to the household. It doesn't necessarily come down to money. Right. Okay. 
Sounds like a plan. <laughs> and the male ego is very frail, so we also have to, you know, tiptoe around that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So, so I'm like, oh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll be moaned tonight. But how how do you how does that affect the bedroom? You know, how does it affect you know intimacy and and and, and basically stuff in the bedroom? Do you think the man would feel like, hey, I'm not, you know, she she you get you get to be on top all the time? You know, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those. Okay, hey, you might like that, but I mean, it's going to affect every aspect of the. It's especially going to affect the the, the relationship between the two of you because, listen, if I'm not respecting you, I'm going to be walking all over you. You understand, like, mm. and and like, you know, you're going to say something. I'm going to be like, <laughs> okay, I, I might just do that because I don't respect you, right. and it's not because I'm not respecting you because you're not bringing in income. It's not because you're not bringing in income. It's because you're not, because you're feeling bad about it. Right. Put it to you like this. It's not my fault that I make more money. Okay. Right. That's, I've got nothing to do with that. That's just the way the cards, you know, the cards were, were, were played, you know, um, now going into, if I'm going into a relationship and I know that this man has, you know, is making less money than me, then I'm, I knew what, I knew what I, I'm signing myself up for. Right. You know, you but if it's a situation into. where, huh? You knew what you were getting into. Right. But if it's a situation where, like, let's say he lost his job or, you know, he was holding the family down and he lost his job, then I'm going to support him no matter what. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm going to hold him up and I'm going to, you know, make sure he gets back on his feet. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I do understand, you know, um, I think as men, you know, I think a lot of times the focus is on women and how much, you know, how hard we have it and single moms and stuff. Like, I think a lot of times the men are really overlooked. You right. know, um, for the things and the struggles that they have to um, endure as well. You know, so again, I, I just stick with you know, it comes down to respect. But if you're acting like a bitch, like you need to get it together. I'm gonna tell you. Right. <laughs> but and and I guess it goes back to what you're saying in 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 reference to um, you know um, you getting into relationship. It, it is a big difference if you got into the relationship and he is, you know, not, you know, making as much you are already making more or he wasn't working at all. It's one thing. But when the man is in the lead, you know, or, or he's a sole breadwinner at this point, or, or let's say you both or he's making more money or he loses his job. Um, it, and, you know, at this point, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter who's making more money or not. But let's say the guy lost his job and it's one of those things. Let's say he lost his job because of an injury. Um, where he can't go back to work or he can't find work because of his injury, then um, I think that affects it in a whole different way too. Because now, as a man, you know, I'm I'm forced. I, I, it, it's an emotional trip as a guy because now I can't provide. I feel like I can't provide for my family because I'm I'm basically a washed up invalid at this point. You understand? Okay, but I mean? if you if you if you got hurt, then right. your disability is going to be contributing to the family. But, you see what but I'm saying? In, in a man's mind, the fact that you're not doing right, and stuff. this is but see, and this is this is where we lose respect, right? Because we're not upset that you lost your job, and we're not upset that you got hurt, and you you only are now contributing your disability check. We're not upset about that. What we're upset about is the fact that you're sitting on the on the couch and whining like a little bitch, right? Right. You want to feel sorry for yourself, your ego, huh? Right. For basically feeling sorry for yourself. Exactly. Like right. you got about three months, you know, of a pity party, sir. And then I'm right. declining my invitation. I'm right. not coming to your pity party. Gotta go. Don't know what to tell you. You, you, you know what I mean? Like it, it just has to come to a point where it's like, all right, enough is enough. Right. right. That also might be just me mm -hmm. being Aquarius, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> because there are a lot of men that actually stay home. Wife goes out to work, but they're the ones taking care of the kids. They fix And there's house. nothing wrong with that. Exactly. If they're doing what, what they're supposed to do. Yard work's done. Everything you come home, you 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 got a bath already set up and all that stuff. You know, you know. Um, and and know there's nothing wrong with that if that's what works for you. First of all, we need to get out. We need to start normalizing, making our what works for us normal, and right. not what society tells us. Exactly. But it's okay, not only so society. Remember, remember now. This is from your parents and your parents' parents, and it, it, it's kind of like from tradition. Right. It comes right. down. You, you know, your father, yeah, hey, man, what are you doing, man? What are you, are you crazy? She right. Gonna, you want to have her taking care of you? If your hey, household <laughs> works, listen, right. if your household works and mom goes off to work and dad right. stays home with the kids and holds it down, God bless. You know yep. what I mean? You have a two-parent mm -hmm. household. Mm -hmm. The kids are well taken care of. You're, you're, you're taking care of each other. You know, um, 
because that's important too. You know, we need to take each other, take, take care of each other too in our relationships. Right. A lot of times we, you know, we, we will focus all of our attention on our career or on our kids and we kind of forget one another, you know, along the way. Um, right. So whatever works for you, that's what works for you. Don't let society tell you what, what you're supposed to be doing. But right. again, it comes back to respect. If you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I don't contribute to the family, so I'm going to sit on the couch and play video games all day, and I'm right. not going to even contribute to, you know, making sure dinner's ready and making sure the laundry's done so my wife has one less thing to do when she comes home from work. No. That's where the respect, you know, starts getting lost. And, it, and it's crazy that you said video games because there's the – a whole different generation now of of older males of, yeah and females that are into gaming and, right. and, and it's crazy because it takes it's it's i guess it's back in the day well, it used to be watch we're watching the sports right watching sports. i was just gonna say that right right back in the day was watching sports but now the new thing is uh i'm gaming and i'm gaming with my buddies on here you hey, don't disturb me right now kind of a thing you know right Right. So, so it's Mr. Like, Hollywood, how did you yeah. wish this point? Which let me could you quiet down there? Let's hear from you. <laughs> yes. So um I can speak on both sides because right. um one point of one point of uh so I am married. Um and currently I winner I do make more money than my wife, but that wasn't always the case. Right. Um, I was at one point we both was working and she was making more money than me. I was also at one point I lost my job because Mm -hmm. because of an injury. It was the only one working. And just like uh, you said, what's the name? DJ what? Oh, PRS one. You can say Reagan. That's fine. (laughs) Okay. All right. DJ PRS one. Okay. Um, just like you had said that, uh, that sometimes the man feels some type of way internally because he no longer is able to provide for his family. That right. I can I can confirm that that is definitely true. Like we try exactly. not to, you yeah, know what I mean. Exactly. We don't want to, right? You know what I mean. We don't want to put a have a pity party or whatever. Sometimes it, it, it goes too far. You you have a pity party too much. Yeah, yeah you way too much. Too right. Much. Yeah, but because we are a man, because we're used to being that masculine dominant person that's always providing and now that we're forced to not do that be out of our control right yeah, we feel some type of way about it but i i don't i i definitely agree with uh miss fern. fern right yeah. i definitely yeah. i definitely agree with you with the relate with the respect because because if the respect is lost then then the relationship is messed up because I I solely believe that all relationships is mostly about communication and communication and respect goes together, you know, because if we have communication that, okay, now I'm injured and I'm home. So now I have more time on my hands to do things in the house, you know, while you're out making money, you know, and I understand mentally that I can't bring home money, but it's other ways that I can contribute. Right. I mean, that's where the communication and the respect come in, you know, and once you lose that, you lose the communication and then I don't care. Right. I'm just sitting here like you say, gaming or on the phone or all this type of stuff. Then that's when your relationship starts to go downhill. But as long as you keep the communication and the respect and the understanding about uh, the roles, I feel like the roles could go both ways. I was on, like I said, I was on both sides and I don't care about, as a matter of fact, I would love for my wife to make more money than me. You know what I mean? That's that's cool. Right. You know, my opinion on it is, um, I mean, I agree with every, um, all you guys. Um, I feel like, yeah, if I had to go out and work, um, and I've been in that position before where I, I you know, I was um, working and making the money and um, the other person wasn't, um, they were out because of an injury and um, they were out for a very long time. And I had no problem with it at, um, in the beginning. You know, I had no problem with it when because he was out, he was sick. You know, it was a reason why he couldn't work. And the job that he had, because he was um, part ownership in his job, they didn't have, like, benefits like when you work for somebody else. So um, everything fell on me. But um, my thing is, you know, I know I had to take care of everything in the house, so I had no problem with it. My problem came in was when I knew that you could go back to work, but you didn't want to. And you started making oh, all yeah. these excuses 
why you could not go back to work. You know, yeah, that's- and that's when like she was saying earlier, the um you lose that respect. Cause now it's like, okay, you're trying to really milk what's going on when you know that you can go back to work. Um like I said, I have no problem like if I had more money and I was one supporting um the house or anything like that, but I do agree if you're staying home and I'm making more money, then you need to be taking care of the stuff that need to be taken care of in the home. So when I come yep. home, I don't have to worry about cooking dinner or helping the kids with homework or cleaning up and washing clothes and all that. You know, yeah. if I'm out there nine, twelve hours a day, I wanna come home to a, a cook meal and sometimes a nice hot bath and all that good stuff. So yeah, I agree with that. And you yeah. do lose respect for somebody when um when they start going into their own, like you said, their little pity party after a while. It was like, after a while, you have to get over it. I mean, this is the situation. We got to live. We got to move on. We got to do what we got to do. Things need to be taken care of, and we do not have time for you to be rolling around in your sorrow. So, yeah. Well, get over not, it. not only that, not only are we, you know, uh, sitting here and listening to your pity party and getting upset because you don't want to move on, but you're not taking into consideration how we're feeling. So Mm -hmm. while you're sitting here and feeling sorry for yourself that you can't bring money into the household, we are also like, we, we are now the burden of, of the bills are now upon our shoulders. We are missing out on our children and the events, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to be at work. We're missing out on the things that we normally did prior to, you know, our lives have changed, have been uprooted and changed in a dramatic um, sense. And we're, we're fine to do it because that's what we do as women who, you know, who are supportive of their, of their husbands, you know, we're going to hold our man down no matter what. But when you start not giving us appreciation and you start not trying to understand from our perspective or where we're coming from, that's when the, the, the disconnect starts happening and the disrespect starts coming in. Because like I said, you know, we're out here holding it down, which is fine, but you don't even appreciate that. And I'm missing my kids uh, dance recital because I'm picking up an extra shift and I'm, you know, making sure you're still taken care of in every way, sexually, financially. I mean, in every way, you understand? And you're still like going to sit here and give me an attitude when I'm your, basically your backbone at this point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm sitting like, here, okay. I'm sitting okay. here <laughs> cracking up, right? I'm hit, I'm sitting here laughing my ass off because I'm reading the comments on the show right now, right? Now, Moan isn't here, but he's on the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and he basically said, let that man play his video. I can actually hear him say it too. He <laughs> let that man play his video game. <laughs> he said, women truly don't have a teamwork women wait I want to make sure I read it right women truly don't have a teamwork make make the dream work mentally he said if the man loses his job he loses his place in the relationship that's how he feels about it um no that's not always <laughs> we've already discussed you know Rome's un- idea of women right he said right. he said he said fuck that men been holding it down for hundreds of years women just started in the 60s Mona, I feel like you might have to jump on this, bro. I don't know. You might end up. If you want if you want to come in the show, just hit the, hit the button. I get you in. Um, men been doing it for years. <laughs> oh Lord, you know, that is actually not wrong. true. That is not true. If you actually think about it, if you really want to start going into the whole animal kingdom, where the women are the ones that are, go out, they hunt, they do, they pretty much hold it all down. So let's not get started with that. Oh, <laughs> Mon, I feel like you needed to be on the show, bro, because she always. No uh, I'm not <laughs> What's that? You just so gonna continue to drink your tea? Yeah. You like hearing a comment? No, I want to hear what you guys say. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't put the um, coffee mug up like I ain't commenting. He's gonna drink his tea. So what you guys say about that? I, I feel like it go both ways. Uh, some some women, like the majority of the women, don't always hold it down. And the majority of the men don't hold it down. So it goes both ways. It, and that is it true. depends on the individual. Yeah, that Absolutely. is true. That is true. That is true. I mean, I'm we really in- can only speak from our own experience, you know? Right. Yeah. I'm sitting up here thinking, like, listening to you guys talk, and I'm thinking, like, you know, um, how do men feel when they are the sole breadwinners and the women stay home? Because you have some women that have that same um, mentality. When the men yeah. go out and provide everything, and they come home and stuff not done, the children not taken care of. I mean, 
it can go that way as well. You know, sometimes and, 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 and it goes back to how you were raised. Don't want to do nothing. Yep, and it goes back yeah. to how you were raised. Like if you know, if you were raised with a single, as a woman, you were raised with a, a a single mom who took care of everything and ran the house and basically did everything. That's all you know. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you know, now that you have a man trying to do things for you, it's like, uh, wait a minute, what yeah. the hell is going on? You know, it's like, yeah. hey, hey. But again, I think it down? goes back to. I don't know. Yeah. Sit down and watch TV. I can't watch all these soaps right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but again, I think it goes back to the respect. You know, if yep, I'm if yep, I'm loving yep. my man and I respect my listen for me, mm -hmm. if my man was able to keep me home and and keep me, you know, um, and make sure the bills were paid and I didn't have to worry about anything, but just raising those kids, the least, the very least that I could do is make sure there's a hot meal on that on that table for him when he came home. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. You know, and right. that's that's how you show your man appreciation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll say other things, but we'll try to keep it paid. Jay, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> least I can do. Burn. When do we ever keep a PG on this show? Come on now. I'm just saying. We just got right. a big mouth on here today. Well, when do we ever keep a PG? <laughs> <laughs> say what you guys say. We ain't no PG show. You know, I mean, that's me. I, I I would make sure, you know, he was he was met at the door with a plate in hand, and you know, maybe on my knees, something like that. Oh no, okay. <laughs> I like how you talking over there. Yeah, bacon, bacon <laughs> that's, and eggs. I mean, okay. you know, like again, if somebody is you know holding it down and making sure you're good, that's the least you can do. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm not doing it because it's like an <laughs> obligation, but that's just my way to show my appreciation. Right, right. and like um, you know, show my love and my care. Right. I was home for um when I was married. I think I was home for like a year and something. I mean, maybe a little longer than that. And that was like the first time I ever not worked. I had just had my daughter. Um, I had a miscarriage before that. So when I got close to um, it was time for me to have her. My husband, <laughs> the man crazy. He was crazy. Mm -hmm. He went to my job and told my job she about to quit. And my supervisor came to me and I'm and was like, oh, I met your husband. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, he came down here and told us that you're about to quit, that you're about to put your um, papers up. I'm like, I ain't never had no conversation like that with him. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> right. So I had to stop working. And I think I wasn't working for like a year and a half or almost two years. And like you were saying, like my husband brought all the money and um, I did contribute to certain things like the little stuff like cable bill, phone bill, stuff like that. But he did all the major bills. and. He could tell you if he, we, you know, we were still together that I, um, when he came home, he had to worry about anything, nothing, nothing. Food was in the uh, microwave waiting on him. The children um, was taken care of. Most of the time they was in the bed by the time he got home, you know, nothing. All he had to do is worry about taking his um, bath, eating his food and getting rest for the next day. He didn't have to take his out. That's, that's great. But, and I feel like, I feel like it goes both ways. Like, what I what I'm learning, I'm still I'm still young. What I'm learning as uh as Can a he husband, go calling us old again? <laughs> I'm not calling y'all old. I'm only all messing with you. I'm only messing with all, you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I'm still learning and I'm pretty sure some I'm gonna use the O word, the older guys that's married <laughs> as well. I'm the pretty seasoned. sure they're, they're still learning. Yeah, there you go, season. They're still learning that we have to always look from the the woman's and our wife's perspective because that can go also the other way when we're home and the wife is out working we should be meeting y'all at the door the same way the same way that y'all y'all are willing to meet us at the door we should be able right. to meet y'all at the door mm -hmm. and and then it becomes a problem both ways when we're not met at the door man and woman mm -hmm. you know? so Especially when we work in and 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 y'all whoever's home and they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to do and then they not and then there we go the, the respect and communication is gone. Now, if we're both working, like at that point, I feel like it should be divvied up evenly. We both, you, you know what I mean. Whoever gets yeah. home first gets dinner. You know, maybe I'll pick up dinner if we're running late. You know, running behind or whatever. You know, we're we're like I'm a nurse. I work still um, as a nurse in um, my nine to five. Plus, I'm you know building my building my businesses. So for me to um, you know do all of that I'm doing and then have the dinner on the table and make sure everything is you know taken care of like that that's a lot. You know, yes, and yep, if I'm yep. if I'm you know with somebody and they're working the same amount of hours that I'm working and expecting me to do all of that then again now everything is just a little the load is way too much on me and that's just not fair right 
You but not, I mean, even though we we got a um a certain topic, that's um that's a good point that you just um made up. I mean, that you just said because I know a lot of people, especially on the man side, feel like just because a woman is going out to work, that she still needs to do everything in the house that you know the cooking, the cleaning, and whatever. Right. Um, you know, my my brother, he's been married over twenty something years, and you know, I know for a fact that him and his wife, they both work. But he do help, you know, around the house. Um, like when I when I was married, I you know we both work. He I work days, he work nights. So you know when I would come in, he would have the children sitting at the table, eating or doing homework, and then he'd be ready to go out to work. And then I would come in and do the rest, clean up, make sure they was ready for bed, finish their homework and stuff like that. That's a team right there. Right. right. Um, but it's also been times when I we both work. And I still did a lot um, at the time. He was he used to work in D. Well, he still worked in DC, but when we were together, he was in DC a lot. And at one time, I felt like I was a single parent because he was there for like two or three weeks, and I would be home with the children doing majority of everything. Yep. You know, working, coming home, taking care of them, all that. So I've been in certain kind, all kinds of situations in um, my relationship. So you know. Well, I mean, even right now with this whole, even right now with this whole COVID thing going on, you know what I mean? Now these parents had to homeschool their kids. Right. And, you know, you had, you know, parents that, you know, for instance, I, I used a couple, a, a, a girlfriend of mine, her and her husband, her husband worked nights and she worked, you know, in corporate America during the day and the kids went to school. Now COVID happened. <clears throat> She's at home, you know, doing her corporate America job at home. She cannot be away from, you know, uh, away from her computer and like tending to the children and doing homeschool and doing all of that. And now the husband who was working nights, um, you know, now has to pick up the day shift and the night shift, you, you, you oh, know wow. what I mean? Because the wife could not realistically, she would do the homeschooling after her, after her, um, you know, her, her time um, at the computer during the day was over, you know, she would do like the homeworks and stuff like that, you know, but they really had to come together as a team. And that's why it's so important, you know, the partner that you choose, that yep. these are the, these are the discussions that you have, mm -hmm. you know, prior to having children, because it gets really real out there. Mm -hmm. you know? It gets mm -hmm. really, you know, and it gets tough. And, you know, there are days that you just feel like, you know, the weight of the world is just, you know, it's just so heavy. And if you don't have a partner that's not respecting you and not appreciating you and not, you know, helping you, you know, lessen that load, you know, it, it gets even, you know, you don't want to have to come home and your house not be your sanctuary, your peace. Right. right. The world right. is, especially in the world we're in now, that this world is like rough enough to, for, mm -hmm. you know, to put us out there, you know, and not have, not be able to come home and, 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 you know, be peace and tranquility you know right, right not that it's ever gonna you know everything's gonna be perfect all the time but at the end of the day you should know that your partner has your has your back no matter what right right i'm gonna be able right. to come home and pop your bra off and that's why i'm single right. damn it <laughs> <laughs> right. <Men suck. laughs> uh, well i don't think all men suck no I they don't I'm, no I they really they really don't nine nine yeah, yeah, no, men don't, <laughs> listen, again, when, when you are, are, I mean, this is completely getting off topic, but if you're mm -hmm. a person to continue to go through the same thing over and over and over again, you might have to want to look inside yourself and see what it is about you that's right. attracting yep. that type of individual. But that's a whole yep. other side. Yep, yep, yep. But I mean, I'm, in, in terms, again, as you said it earlier, in terms of how the climate of the world has changed now, um, in terms of um, people being home, kids being homeschooled, and all that stuff, you know, it, it, it changes a whole bunch of stuff. Like how we're set up with, with in, in, in our structure, in our household, my wife, you know, she's in the store all day, basically doing stuff. Um, I work the night shift. So I'm home with the guys in the morning, you know, when in their homeschooling and stuff like that, I'm, I'm home with them. Uh, and basically um, uh, we're still, we're at the point where we actually, I'm kind of like laser in between her and them because we'll be on FaceTime with her at the same time, making sure everything's right. You know, she's checking stuff from the school while she's sitting at work and she's like, hey, she was shooting me a text, you know, like, hey, look, hey, they haven't done this assignment. This assignment's missing. Da, da, da. And then I'm I'm the one got to get into it. But now, hey, your mother said you got to do this assignment. You know, she don't want to come home and, and <laughs> this assignment ain't done. So it, it's one of those things where 
it changed. It, it it wasn't like that before, but now it has, you know. Well, again, you know, this climate, you know, this whole COVID has really tested every aspect of our, yep. of our lives and mm-hmm. relationships too. Yep. There, the divorce rate has skyrocketed because right. behind this. Yep. And a lot of, a lot of, home, there was but a lot of side um, chicks who thought there was the main chick just realized right. they were side chick. <laughs> but that's, um, to me, that's <laughs> crazy because, so because you have to be home majority with the person that you decide to marry, now you're realizing that you really don't like them. I'm going to realize. Yeah, because uh, there you go. I'm gonna realize I'm I'm gonna like you before all that um happens. Right. Yeah, but but not necessarily because everyday life we were thick about it. We were, like I said, you know, a, a, a typical day in the, in the average American family was like you know a family of like four. Let's just say it was school and then you know sport activities and then you know going to work, going to school, sport activities, and then the if the husband had you know business trips. If the wife had you know her little mm-hmm. whatever with you know there was so much distraction going on that you didn't Book even club. know that you didn't like that person. Yep. Right. But everybody um, in a realistic world, everybody don't have a mate that has business trips or their children and stuff. You know, some people can't even afford that type of um, stuff. So a lot of times it's just work and then come home to the kids. So right, but it might've been, but it might've been like work schedules off. Like, you know, I'm working nights, you're working days. So where it's like two ships in the night passing. Right. right, and I understand it because I I lived through that for a very long time. But it was days that that person had off for the weekend or whatever the case may be. Um, we spend time together. Hopefully, and people was doing that. Um, I feel like if you want to really feel like that, that person is um, a problem, you're gonna figure it out a long time ago. I I think that it just might have um speed things along. But when I heard that, I was just like, wow! Like people, the rate of divorce was going up because you gotta be in the house with this person. Yeah. To yeah. me, I feel like that's Man. the time for, for y'all to be trying to catch up on time that you, you were missing because of work and the children. And but think, of it, but, but think of it like this, though. Men usually don't leave a household just to go be a bachelor. He, uh, usually men will stay within the household miserable until either he finds something else or the wife leaves. Is that true, guys? Mr. Hollywood, you can uh, real So yes, I yes, I can actually confirm that. Uh normally if a man is in a house that he's comfortable in and, and all of his needs is met, normally a man wouldn't leave there because he's comfortable, all of his needs are met. Right. He wouldn't need anything. But if his needs is not met, then he's gonna go to where a person or somebody is supplying the needs or that comfortability. Whatever but that's not he, what she what, said. What did you say, Miss Fern? You said what I'm saying is if a man's in a house, let's just say the man's ma- the, all right, you're in a marriage and you're not happy in that marriage, right? But yeah. your children are there, this is your home, this is what you're used to, it's your uh-huh. comfort, you're you're comfortable there. Right. Um he's not going to up and leave because he doesn't like his wife anymore. He's not going to up and he's going to stay in that relationship until either A he finds another woman who makes him happy and gives him that same comfort or, or, or more, right. That he could find that stability with, or he leaves, um, the, excuse me, the wife leaves. The man usually never leaves the, you know, he'll stay in a relationship miserable and may, yeah. you know, that's when there's side chicks and these other, you know, things start happening and he'll get his little something, something on the side, but he'll stay in that home miserable. That crazy. To me, I I I, I kind of I kind of agree with it, and I think I think women would do it as well. I think it go both ways. Yeah. It depends on who. See, the woman I disagree. Is. I think women are more inclined to leave and go get her own place and take the kids if she's miserable in that relationship. She can't take it no more. You know, she's more inclined to leave. Not all women. I'm not saying all women, but but a woman is more inclined to leave and be on her own and be single and just do her than a man would be just to. I, I can't think of any any case, honestly, I've seen of a man that I know or that I've heard of that literally moved out of his house, mm-hmm. wants to divorce from his wife, moves out of his house, and he's living in a, in an apartment all by himself. See, and I and I agreed with both of you um, on, on on Fern end of it. Um, I would I would say new women because I I know the older generation the woman would stay. You right. know what I mean? In in the right. older generation, the woman would actually say they would not leave because that was unheard of back then. It was taboo. Right. You know what I mean? 
So the new generation. Yeah. Oh Lord, here we go. Here <laughs> we go, folks. But anyway, um, yeah, the women would welcome who's, uh, who's Ramon. Okay. We got you in your own little Who box since you quarantine. No, Jesus. <laughs> Wait, where's our You had to come where's on. You had to come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and as Hollywood said, what's up, Mo? <laughs> you couldn't take it, did you? Nah, man. <laughs> I you sound like you need to inhale it, brother. Man. I'm, I'm I'm hurting. I'm hurting. What's up, everybody? I'm hurting. Hello, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, I couldn't tell you, bro. Fire, fire was killing me. I know. <laughs> fire I'm was killing, killing you. Fire was killing us. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'll come on the last few minutes of the show so, so she can't get me too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. Anyway. But yeah, I don't want to say I agree both. Foremost, first and foremost, Ramon, I'm glad that you're feeling a little bit better. I, I didn't, you know, I'm just hearing about it, but. Thank you. Uh, this, this, uh, man, this is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I could never imagine, um, it being as bad as it is, and I don't even have it as uh, worse as um, right. other people. So, uh, you know, this, this is something special. But uh, watching y'all tonight, y'all made me feel a little better. No, I had to get on, man. Hey, look, man. <laughs> but, look, look. <laughs> the Animal Kingdom shit, right? <laughs> check, check this out, right? Nah. Oh, wait a minute. First, first, Mr. Hollywood, we, I'm going to have to apologize because this man crazy right here. Yes. I'm just it's, letting you know. It's cool. I'm used to it. My wife crazy too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> man, we've been doing this shit for a very long time. Very long time. Women been doing it for about 50, 60 years. Not to take anything away from y'all because you've done a great job. Okay. But I don't I don't want to hear that complaining shit and all that shit. You haven't done it long enough to, to complain. So, and, and then you said something about, you know, uh, but being 50-50 and, and uh, who come home first. Man, fuck, let me tell you something. While you at work all day long, what you should be thinking about is what I'm going to be preparing for dinner. Because what I'm thinking about when I get home is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to get something to drink. I'm going to watch my woman cook. And then I'm gonna put it a B. And that's that's the natural order of life. Okay, and that's that's part of being 50-50. No, 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 no. But, but if you if I beat you home, I'm not cooking. You go, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna take Let my me shot. tell you something. Let me tell you something. Oh, if you oh, if man. you enjoy cooking, listen, what if what if your wife doesn't enjoy cooking and you do? Well, What's the okay. difference? Got it's like saying, um, you know, my wife enjoy fucking building a house, you know what I'm saying? She ain't gonna build a house. You know, say that your job is <laughs> you cooking, and and you say you you mess with the kids and shit. You know, I'm gonna look at the bills. You know what I mean? We gonna keep shit in right. the magic. If you're working and I'm working, okay, and you beat me home and you want me to cook, then you take out the food. It's a fifty fifty. I'm gonna take out the. I don't know what you was thinking about cooking all day long. Uh, Ramon, take out the damn steak. What's like? <laughs> it's it's called communication. Nah, nah, check this out. Nah, we not doing that. That's your job. That is your job. Oh, he did well, not just say. He did not I just say that's your job. Being, that is my job. That is. It's my job to do what? Oh Lord. Cook. The cook what? <laughs> Whatever it is you thought about cooking all day long. Let me Jeez. tell you. When something. I'm at work, I'm not thinking about coming home. Listen clearly. About cooking all day so long. That makes work. sense. That's now it problem. makes sense. The last time that I was on the show with you guys, now it made sense when you were talking about what you were talking about, how women weren't putting it down for you in the bedroom. Now it under I understand why. <laughs> because you see, if you keep your woman happy, then she's more than happy to put it down. You understand? <laughs> so if you're going around talking about this is your job and this is what you got to do, there goes the respect. The respect goes right out the window. I can show you what your job is, okay? Ooh. Woo! Yeah. Shot oh, nothing. Woo, fire. Woo, nothing. Yeah. I need a bulletproof vest or something. Shit. Ain't no way. Don't stop that woo shit. Ain't no, no, no. You were, look, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> I applaud you, ladies, because y'all have come a long way, and I and, and I and I love the fact that y'all feel so strongly uh, of yourselves that y'all can speak and act the way that y'all do on podcasts and shows all over the world. 
But this is a man's world. Understand that first and foremost. It's a what man's you, world. We Wait a whole time we off. Flag on play. Flag on play. Listen, listen, we're going to give uh, him a little bit yeah. of a pass because clearly the COVID's <laughs> going to his brain cells a Must little bit. Must be. Woo. Because let I don't know. Say, who let, me say, let me say this. <laughs> you say it's a man's world. Then if it's, it's a man's, man's world, then women should be home while y'all doing what y'all supposed to do out in the working world. So it's y'all man's world, then do so. Do what you're Listen. supposed to do. Wait, so, we got to go about the work. We would love to you. Wait a minute. I'm going to settle this right now. I'm going to settle this right now. Okay. Anytime that there is something brought out, right? When you have a model of something and they bring out the new model, it's the updated version, right? So, when God mm-hmm. made man, he had to bring out the new and improved model. And that's why he made woman, right? Because he had to upgrade it. Yeah. Yeah. But he, but so. he didn't. He didn't use anything new. He took the rib from man. No, sir. Oh. No, sir. Come you on. Ain't a man Stop teaching that dinosaur. Bible exactly. We no, are not from the rib of a man. Miss Savvy, he is correct. He didn't use anything new, but he up he upgraded it. He gave us a womb. He gave us breasts. Come on. He gave Come us on. things that you guys could Come never on. have. That's why there was an upgraded version of the man. So right, and you gotta realize. We we closer than God than y'all are, so we didn't come from you. We came from the Creator. So I want people to stop thinking that we came from the rib of a man. No, we didn't. Yeah, but, but hold up, hold up, hold no, up. No, we did not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not going to do that. We all know with so women are hybrid people. versions of men. We all know that. We, look, check this out. <laughs> you want you want to start something? If anything, man, <laughs> <need it>. <laughs> man is one fatal flaw in, in this lifetime, and you can check back. It's always been a woman. Okay, always been a woman. Yes, Every because because you cannot because you cannot deny the power of the pee because you guys will want to take down kingdoms over the woman's pee. So like you have you don't have enough sense in your brain. Women are not fighting over and, and starting wars because of some good D. Like that's not no. happening. Well, no, 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 no. Y- no, no women. No. <laughs> y'all can depends on the woman. This world, we, we created the world that you live in. Y'all should be appreciative, more appreciative than men of what you want. Mr. Hollywood, like, I want to hear from a, a sensible man. I need you to okay, say and something. And we I created you, you came from you. us. Don't remember that. You came from a woman, so remember that. <laughs> exactly. What do you What do you want to hear? Like, this time, man, because he, he's going all the way to the left. I don't even uh, know why y'all let him in here. <laughs> I, 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 I kicked um, the door. I kicked well, the door. I, 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 when... <laughs> Maybe it's the way that, that he was raised. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I'm saying certain men, and I have family members that was raised yeah. as, in, as in roles, you know? Men have their role, and a woman has their role. A woman's supposed to cook, clean, you know, give up and all that type of stuff, and a man's supposed to make the money, come home and chill and eat, you know? But I feel like I have the communication with my wife and everybody should understand that it's not it's not roles. Unfortunately, we live in a sexist world, whether people want to believe it or not. We live in a sexist world, but roles is is not is not in play nowadays. Like I feel I feel like it's the communication. Wherever I lack, you pick up. You know what I mean? It's the yin and yang thing. You know what I mean? The communication. That's why you got to be equally yoked. That's why you know, like I said, the communication. And everybody has to be all cohesive and all together. But once again, where I lack or where she lack, I pick up or she pick up. That's it. No roads. If, if I don't feel like sweeping today, then you go over there and sweep it. If you don't feel like cooking, then I cook today. Mm. Mr. Hollywood, uh, how, how old are you, um, Hollywood, and how long you been married? So I am 26, and I've been married almost five years. Okay. He doesn't count. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, hey, he look. doesn't count. And this is, this is what I'm going to say. Um, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people say because of my age and how long I've been married, certain things. But I've actually been told that I'm more wise than a lot of older people. I wouldn't have thought you were 26. I would have thought you were older. Exactly. And I I have more wisdom than a lot of people that have been in marriages longer than me. Matter of fact, I was told told the same thing when I was 26. I realized after that they lied to me. No, (laughs) no, no, no. I, really, I, mean, I don't it, think it, anybody it, told you that. I really don't. Over 25, yeah, people told me that. They're lying to you, uh, Mr. Hollywood. In about five or six years, 
Me and you gonna get up and have a drink, and you are gonna be like, "Yo, fuck these bitches." Watch, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, so, 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 look at here. One, one, I'm a minister. I don't drink. Two, uh, I know, I know a lot about relationships and, and everything like that. Me and my wife is actually about to write a, a marriage book, so I definitely understand psychology and the way that a woman thinks and the way that a man thinks. So, are you a I definitely will have to disagree with that. I'll take that back, uh, Father. I'm sorry, I ain't, I ain't mean to. <laughs> Offend you? No, I'm dead serious. I ain't, I ain't know you was a minister, brother. Nah, no, you good. You good. <laughs> but you, but you, you, you very comical. You're a comedian. You funny. I, 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 I eat, I eat, and I, I take away from what I can take away from what you say. No, no, absolutely, and, I, and and that's what all this is about for real. But yep. you, you're 26 years old, man. I think that's amazing that you and your wife will write a, a, a relationship book, man. Uh, hopefully, your marriage lasts longer than, <laughs> than the book. Oh. You know, yes, I mean, that was incredible. That is it will, but it will, it will last because, like you said, that you know he's got the key component, which is communication. At the end of the day, like I said in the beginning of this of this um of the show, it 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 all whatever works for your household, that's what it should be. And you know, yes. and it does. You should not allow society <clears throat> to dictate or determine what works in your household. You know, we're joking right. and we're being playful, but at the end of the day, it's between you and your partner. And I think too many people allow too many outside influences to get involved in between their relationship. That's supposed exactly. to be between those two people. Yeah, Very absolutely. True. Mm-hmm. absolutely. And, and a lot of people worry about what, what would the Joneses say? You know what I mean? Right. They and I think worry about what, what, what society what, says. I think that all stems from what you were saying um, earlier, um, Guy Dean, about mm-hmm. how, um, you know, like our grandparents and their parents was brought up. It right. was a certain kind of... Um, way that you know they had to run their household or how women had to um stay because they feared that they couldn't take care of themselves or just because we just didn't leave our marriage it was unheard of um right, today, right you know right. situations are different you know women are like sorry to say we are on the forefront now you mm-hmm. know well, mm-hmm. yeah even to go back to what ramon said about everyone having their role um i do think that there is there is a lot of that to like there's a lot to be said on that because in a in a in a in, in the ideal world, yes, <clears throat> women are are that our strengths are nurturing and and being like you know the the caretakers and the men's strength is to go out there in the world and be the breadwinners. But that's not the society of the world that we're living in today. So we have yep. to adjust to to what we're actually dealing with, yep. you know. And and it has to be a 50-50 because that's not you know we don't in America. I don't think there's anybody that can really you know the average person can not live without a two <clears throat> two income household you know mm-hmm. both people have to be out working in order to you know pay for their bills and stuff like that and mm-hmm. so again that's where the respect and the communication comes into play but i mean if you're in a situation like if i had a choice i think a woman should be home caring for those children and i think the man should be home should be out you know earning that living because that's the way that's that's the formula it was set up to be that's the way it's supposed to be you know, um, and that's why we were gifted with the attributes that we have right. to mm-hmm. give our children and our family, you know, both sides of, of those attributes, you know. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Because if you look at um, society today and the way um, structures is, the reason why a lot of our children are the way that they are, because both of the parents are outside of the home. Yep. They don't mm-hmm. have any structure. It's mm-hmm. nobody really mm-hmm. there. And then when the parents do come home, you know, everything is like, we got to get homework done. We got to get dinner done. We got to get this done. You know, like you said, you got some um, parents that that children into soccer, into that. So if you had coming home from work and then you got to run out to soccer and then you got to run um, Susie over here, then you got to, so, it, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. But when you have a parent in the house, it comes out better, you know, because you have somebody right. that, that can tend to the children, attend to the children's right, needs. Right. And we forget that. Because we're so worried about, you know, what's going on out in the other world. So, and, you know, and it's, uh, and it's crazy how generation changes because um, my father's generation and my father, you know, my grandfather's um, generation. Um, I remember, you know, my grandfather, my grandma, I think I told you, you guys this in the first season. My grandparents didn't speak for a long time, but my grandmother made sure his food was on the table. Uh, he went out. He was he was a cab driver, so he'd go out drive taxis all day. A couple of side chicks to hit the bars and then um, get home. Um, he ate food at the table and got up, 
went to the bedroom, did what he I'm not the bedroom, but he, he get he gets up, does what he has to do, and the dirty dishes are there. She comes in, she takes the dishes, puts in the sink. That was her job. Um, my father was the same way. You know, he he ate, uh, drank whatever he had to drink, and got up and left the table. Dishes was there. Um, it was it was the woman's job now to pick up the dishes, clean the table off, and all that stuff. I still see that with 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 um, you know, with with with, with certain gen- that generation. However, me, my even though my father was like that, I, I, he raised me different. I was the one. I made sure when I got up, my plate went with me because he. He would leave his, but when I got up off the table, he made sure and said, hey, you, you got a maid here? You, you, you think your mother's a maid? Pick that shit up, take it in the sink, wash it off. And that's how he raised me. So now I can't I can't get up and leave the dishes for my wife on the table. That that feels funny to me. You know what I mean? It feels like I'm abusing her somehow. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I can't I can't I can't get up and leave the table messy. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's one of those mm-hmm. things where the generation changed. And it's uh, something as simple as that, you know, it was like, oh, wow. Like right now, unheard of, a woman right now would be like, did this, did he just leave the goddamn dishes on the table? Oh, I was talking one bit of shit. I was talking one bit of shit to my mother. My mother was raised by um, an Italian, you know, her Italian parents. Right. Grandmother came from like Naples, Italy, came over and her, her marriage to my grandfather was arranged. You know, the same thing. My grandfather would be in the city for like a week. Um, or my grandmother was home with the kids. He would stay in the city, work in his three jobs, have all his little side. My, my mother, being the oldest child, drove her father to Maryland, <laughs> um, from New York to Maryland <laughs> to go um, to his mistress's uh, wedding. You, you know what I mean? And like, nobody, you know, that's just how it was. But the same thing, like I was the one, my mother was like, now, you know, we would all be eating off a of paper plate. So my stepfather would get like a glass plate you know, and then the same thing, he would get up off the table and he wouldn't clear his dish. And I'm like, ah, oh, excuse me, sir. Also one minute to my stepfather. No, uh, the maid's not, the maid's off tonight. You better go put right. your dish in the dishwasher. My mother's like, Fern, don't stop. I'm like, no, he can get up and he can take his dish. Which, mm-hmm. Nobody broke his hands. Right. Yeah, yeah I was that child. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't, break the dish. don't break uh, tradition. Don't break tradition. Don't break tradition. Don't break tradition. That was me, you know. <laughs> Ramon's already shaking his head. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love you, Fern. <laughs> <laughs> but see, my thing growing up, um, seeing my grandparents, like my um, mother, um, mother, um, she wasn't like that type of typical woman. Like she stayed home. I don't know how that woman made her money. I think she probably was selling drugs somewhere, but she used to have a house full of people. She she was married, all that kind of stuff. But I never seen her cater to a man. But my father um mother was like that. My grandfather was they was in that situation. My grandmother worked and my um, grandfather stayed home. But she would cook and clean and all that. And he did none. He did none of that. He warmed food up. That's all he did. So I saw stuff like that. And then I grew up in my household, where my mother, like, she would work sometimes. Didn't you know? My father brought home uh, most of the money, and she cooked. So I saw different things um, in the household. But when I got married, you know, that was my thing because I was taught how to cook and clean and all that. And you train your children how to do that. That's how I ran my household until I just got tired. How how different do you think it is culturally? Like, do you think how different do you think that is? Like culturally, so like as as a white woman, right? Where you know we're always seeing how strong black women are, and you know they're they're not like really being um, you know we're known not known, but the stereotype for us is that we're very passive. We let you know we let um, the man kind of like run over us whereas the black woman the stereotype is to be um you know aggressive and you know out there so do you think it's culturally different um, i think so yes i really think so i think because how um black women and black girls was raised and what we've seen and what we had to deal with so i really right. i really think so yeah so do you think you think black women are more inclined to not really be catering to their man no. then you can answer that question too I'll answer that shit. I'll, that's what you asking for? You, you, you ain't dating. Hey, look, Kyle, Kyle man, they don't want to do you shit for us. You ain't dating nothing deal. You married, sir. They don't want to do shit for us, man. No. <laughs> Hell no, man. Everything <laughs> is, uh, if I do this, what are you going to do? And it's it's always some kind of give and go, man. Hell, man, but black women are hard, man. They hard on men. 
It depends yeah. on the woman. Especially the man they meet. Say that again, Mr. Hollywood. I'm sorry. What you say? It, dep- it depends on the woman. Just like, Thank like you. it's like different relationships and different different people. It depends on the individual because everybody's not the same. Right. That's why I don't like statistics because you can't you can't say that the whole world or, or this whole population is like this. I don't like I don't different. like the fact that they stereotype white women to be passive because I am not passive at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we know you not. not. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I don't even know she white. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I always tell people I say she's my white black friend. She's my white. Right. Black friend. <laughs> No, but like, listen, don't get me wrong. Like, I do believe in submission. I do believe that a woman, not that she should be submissive, but I, I, again, I think that there's, there's a lot of power in that, you know, where a woman is submissive to her man, but see these, these men want this woman to be submissive to him, but he's not giving her anything to be submissive to. Didn't want that. Absolutely. Right. And, the, and it, the, there's a huge difference between submission and just being a doormat and a fool. Right. Like, exactly. you're not going to walk full over me. You know what I mean? Right. Like, um, right. one of the best examples I can give is Jennifer Lopez. <clears throat> now, of course, I don't know the woman personally, but from what I see, how she acts in her relationships, to me, she allows her man to lead. She allows her man, she likes her, and she said it in, in interviews. Here is this powerful woman, woman, um, you know, <clears throat> Uh, in the business world, you know, control of her career, you know, she's very powerful in all aspects of her career and her business. But then when it comes to her relationship and she's very submissive, she's very, you know, she's, she'd rather have a man take that lead. Mark Anthony was running the show, you know, even, um, what's his name now? Alex Rodriguez, you can tell he's running the show, you know what I mean? And she's like, you know, submissive to that. Um, yeah. but it doesn't take away from her own individuality right. and it doesn't take away from right. her own power. Right. And I think a lot of women, they're afraid of that word. You know, right. I used to say that all the time about being submissive and people be look, women be looking like, what? And like you, how you just explain it, like it's the difference from being submissive than being a doormat. Right. And yeah. men have to understand that a woman being submissive is not mean that you can run her. You know, oh, it, Lord it, have it's mercy. just certain <laughs> things when it comes to our man. What you and say, I Lord have mercy, for Ramon? <laughs> Because women I, don't I feel like that look, as well. First of all, women got to know the, the, the definition of submission. You know, as, as women use that word more than men use it. And I truly don't believe y- y'all know what the word means. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't think, you don't think a lot of women don't. Is where, you don't think the way I explained it is what it means? No, no, no. I'm just saying that, 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 was, that was what you said. But there's a damn near everyone. I hear this when we go to work and we all hanging out, whatever. I hear this word all the time when relationships uh, are beginning, you know, get talked about. And I'm like, man, do, do they know what the word means? And they truly don't. And men don't even use that word as much as uh, I, I think we should. But uh, it's just truly sad because submission is a beautiful thing, you yeah. know, and it's on both parts. Mm-hmm. OK, yes. uh, I submit to my role in the relationships or in a relationship and you submit to your role. And right. just like the brother said earlier, whatever floats each other's boat, y'all have that understanding, that communication, then it's going to work for y'all. It's not going to work for everybody. I totally agree with that. But that word, you know, it just, I don't even like talking about it anymore because I honestly believe this small percentage, that they don't know the meaning of it. And it's right. like, Right, it's called lack of education, and when you have lack of education, you're not going to understand it. So you're going to look at it as a dirty word. Like I'm not going to be submissive to that person, but Miss Fern um explained it well. Like you, if you're being submissive to somebody, you have to have you have to be able to have that power to be able to use it when it comes to men. You know, a lot of men use it in a different way. They want to mm-hmm. use it to um, control, and it's that's not what being submissive. And you not only just your mate. You can be submissive to somebody, a male that that, that you're close to. You right. know, it comes in a, a lot of forms. So, mm. but we look at it as a bad word. Like, no. But why? But why do we look at it as a bad word? See, the miseducation right, starts that's what at home. Right. It starts right. home with your mom. With, what did your mom teach you? What did grandma teach your mom? That's mm-hmm. where the miseducation starts. That's why black men have the problem they have today when it comes to... But I, don't, I just don't agree. I don't agree with um. it's just coming from the woman. It has to come from both parties. Because when you don't have... Well, I, I'll say this. I think, I think um, especially in... So I have, I have biracial children, right? <clears throat> I have two daughters and a son. And their father had three other children. 
with his ex-wife who was an African-American woman. And so we have, we both have two daughters and one son. So we have my son who's biracial and her son, who is hundred percent African-American and they were raised pretty much with the same values, the same, you know, thing going on. Um, just some different neighborhoods, um, pretty much went to school together. Um, their father was involved, but one went down one path and one went down another path. Why is that? Do you know what I'm saying? And I really do feel with the boys and especially now I'm, I might get, I might get a little backlash for this, but this is my opinion um, from, from my experience of what I've seen. But I do feel because the African-American women have had to be such a strong force in their family because their men have been taken out of the family through incarceration, through being killed, through, you know, all these different things that have occurred over time that they've had to be, you know, the, the, the strength of that family. And I think a lot of emasculation happens to these young boys in these particular families, whereas in other cultures, the boys are more on a pedestal. The boys are more, low, especially like an Italian or a Jewish family, you know, those boys are put in, pretty much put on a pedestal where the moms, I think in like an African, African-American um, household are more firmer because they're afraid the streets are going to get them or they're afraid that they're gonna be subjected to, you know, certain things that are going on in their environment. Um, and I think that uh, those, that because of that type of, um, you know, mentality that has gone on over the course of time, you know, it's, it's where a lot of the, um, the issues that are, that have been happening in that community. And that's just my opinion. I, I agree with this. I, I, I can't, I can't find no fault in that, you know? Um, I mean, I, um, my only thing about that is I didn't raise a son, so I wouldn't really know how to really answer that part, but only right. watching my, um, my mother's with my brothers. And what I can say is, um, I, I think that um, it's, 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 it's the, how can I say it? it I don't think that it's always because the, the African-American woman um, feels a certain kind of way. I think it's the environment that the child is raised in. Because well, I you think see, do, I, I, have think, seen, well, I have I seen think, um, black women live in certain neighborhoods and was like a single mom raising black children and their children turned out fine. Yeah, I think it's sometimes it's the neighborhood that your your children are raised in because sometimes you get caught up into what's going on in your your neighborhood. Environment. Yeah, environment. You no, know, I was raised. Me and my brothers was raised with a mother and father. My father died two years ago. My mother died in ninety nine. So we were practically raised with our um, mother and father, but we didn't live in the best neighborhoods, and the neighborhood kind of swallowed up my my brothers. You know, I was I was more homebody so it didn't touch me as much so sometimes it's the neighborhood and you know it was we yeah. was raised with parents we was raised with grandmothers and grandparents we like had a big family so everybody was pouring into us so a lot of times it's the environment it's you know i had um for a perfect example my oldest daughter father lived in a a certain kind of neighborhood and he was raised by a single mom and he found our neighborhood more appealing than where he lived at. And I could have always to ask him, like, why would you want to come and live in this kind of neighborhood and take part of this kind of culture, you know, this kind of environment? So it's sometimes it's the rate of the neighborhood. It's not always because of a black woman raising a guy. A, a well, black, I think it's also um, the individual. Son. Yeah, I also think it's the individual because, like, um, for instance, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So me and my my three other siblings, we all lived in forced to care for like about six years or whatever it was. Here it is. We all experienced the same thing, yet each one of us went down a different path. Each one of us interpreted that and 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 took whatever we took from that. And, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, just basically lashed out the way we lashed out but in different, in so such different ways. Do you know what I mean? One, one of us may became, may have became over successful, you know, became like an overachiever. Another, another one of us may have been like, you know, addicted to drugs. Another one of us may have become like a codependent. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using these as examples, but I'm just saying like the four of us 
who experienced the same environment, who lived together, had the same, um, you know, were in the same homes, the same things that happened to us, happened to all four of us at the same time, but each one of us and our experiences were completely different in how we interpreted that. Um, I think that plays a big, a big role also too, because you can have two children in the same house and one go one way and the other one go the opposite way. You know, like you just said with you and your brother. So it's eight twenty three, guys. I know. I, know. I, was, just, I was just looking at the clock. I was looking at the same thing. I think so. Even though this this discussion is going great, um, I think we should probably kind of wrap table it, wrap it, wrap it up. Um, you guys are welcome to join us again some other time, so we can talk some more crap. Um, no, but talk. for now. <laughs> But now, I guess, um, just um, let everybody know what, what's going on with you. You know, uh, what 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 do you have? What projects you have coming up? Um, basically, you know, just kind of sell yourself till we wrap it up. And Moan, since you're, you know, you're the guy, um, we can probably have some couple questions for you that you know that that the people might want to hear. Uh, you being COVID, um, I had a couple questions, um, but um, we'll go ahead and ha have everybody say what they had to say before. We jump into those questions. <laughs> uh, well, um, I ain't got shit going on but COVID. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, it's been a hard two weeks. Um, <clears throat> the beginning, uh, when the symptoms start, you know, right. Um, it takes you by surprise, but there's no mistake, and you know what it is. Right. That's what I'm saying when people say, you know, oh, it's just a cough. You you know what it is. There's no mistake in this. And then. The next three days are the hardest days, and then you'll have a couple of days where you're like, "Oh, it must be gone." And then um, you get to the, the the final stages where I'm at, and um, you, you have a cough, a uh, slight headache, and um, shortness of breath. And I mean, I'm talking about getting up out the chair. I'm tired, you know. Right. Like I'm trying to catch my breath just by standing up. Right. And, um, you know, I'm not in the best of shape, but I'm not in the worst of shape either. So. And, and it's pretty scary because, you know, you got to keep an eye on uh, the shortness of breath, you know, because if it get any worse, you have to go to the hospital. Um, I was fortunate I didn't have a fever. No, nope, you went into mute. I, my apologies. That was somebody. Yeah. Calling. Um, my entire body was just in, in pain. And because of the inf uh, because of the injection um, confession I had. I had a double ear infection. Mm. So I had to actually go to the hospital last week and uh get antibiotics. So um this 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 is uh by far one of the worst experiences I've ever had. And and like I said, this isn't I, I don't even have it as bad as, as others who, right. who's in the hospital and um, you know hospitalized so, and stuff. Yeah, I'm not even going to complain. Now how did how how does I, again, the question I was going to ask: How does it? How has it affected family? Like you being quarantined at home with the kids, with the you know your wife and stuff like that. How 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 does that affect your household? It's a different mood, um, right? You know, uh, when you, you know have a nine and a seven year old and a fifteen and sixteen year old, and um, the twenty two year old she doesn't live with us, right? But um, you know, because everybody the last eight months we've all been living COVID. You know, we so you get to see everything that's been going on and, and all the deaths and, and the sickness. So when I come home and I'm sick, you know, everybody's like, you got, you got you got the coronavirus and they know they can't touch me. They got to stay away from me. I have to stay in the room. And it's one of the worst feelings in the world because I don't want to give it to them. But at the same time, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very loving person. I hug and kiss on my family all day long. I haven't been able to touch my family. In over ten days, mm. you, and that's one of the things my, my daughter said to me. Like right now, I'm not contagious, but I, you know, at the, the the waning ends of the effects. And the thing she said, "So can I hug you tomorrow?" And I said, "Yeah, but you know, I mean, I don't really want to. I want to hug her, but I don't. I'm scared." Right. So right. Make sure it's it's still safe. Yeah, you know. So it's 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 one of the. Have worst. you tested again? No, not yet. When will you test again? It'll be. It'll probably be uh, this weekend. Right after. I think what right after the. Do you the, know? Do you know where you got it from? Oh, I know exactly where I got it from. I know exactly where I got it from, and uh, another colleague got it from the same, same area. Same, same, right? 
So, oh, wow. you know. Were you it, wearing your mask and everything? Were you doing, you know, you, using your proper... Um, see, that's, that's the thing. Well, for our job, right, we get asked to deal with combative patients. And those mm-hmm. patients often... Uh, Spit often, and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I deal so, with those too, yeah. You know, it's it's one of them things. I can tell you this much. I won't be doing this shit no more. <laughs> I, I promise you that. Right. You know. But um, we had the 16 and 15 year old tested. We're waiting for their test results. It'll be. Did back. it just come on to you all of a sudden? Uh, not was not it like was it like a tickle starting in your throat, and then it just got like progressed, or was it like it was, one day you just woke up and your whole body hurt? It was pain. It was um, my legs were hurting. It started hurting towards the end of my shift, and um, you know, I paid no mind. I'm like, damn, I must, you know, I worked three doubles in a row, and it was you my know. legs. Like, you know, my legs are hurting. Right. And then uh, that night I laid down and it's just like overnight, the body, the chills, the headaches, the body aches, the coughing, you know, it, it, you know, it's just, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this feels different. And what are you doing to be proactive about it? Are you taking vitamins? Are you like up and up, you know? Oh yeah, I'm taking vitamins. Um, I'm drinking um, elderberry tea twice a day. <laughs> Good. I got sea moss downstairs. Um, that have, was my next question, the sea moss, yep. Yeah, I got car liver pills. I have uh, garlic pills, ginger root pills, you know. Are you staying active? I know it hurts, but are you staying moving and active? Yeah, I, I, I walk around in the room for about Good. five days. Yeah. That's very important. No, because this they, they say that this, this virus makes you want to sit down, and that's what it wants you to do. It wants you to sit down and not move. And the more that you do that, the more chance that you're giving it to really take over your body. Yeah. So if you're able to, and if even when you have fevers, do not take the um, Tylenol. If you can yeah. withstand, let the fever run, because that fever is what's actually fighting that virus. Hmm. Interesting. So, so, people don't know that. That's right. The nerves. That's right. That's right. Advice, you know, take take um you know take as many hot showers as you can to open up you know that that chest. Mm-hmm. You know, um even you could take like um get like a um like a washcloth. Make sure make sure it's clean, of course, and soak it up. You know, and and just cough as hard as you can into that into that washcloth because you want those lungs expanding. You don't want anything like crystallizing in those lungs, anything like that. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, the best thing you can do is just you know be proactive and and you know stay on top of it and stay as active as you can. You know, yep. I mean, your, your body is going to tell you. Listen to your body. If your body's telling you you're tired then be tired. You know what I mean? But don't sit in it. You know, if you can only do three minutes, then just do the three minutes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm like, definitely with you. I had to have that conversation recovery. after moan. I had to have that conversation with my family and I was like, you know what? Something we never thought of, but, uh, and I think we all need a contingency plan. If somebody in your family gets it, where in the house they're going to be, um, right. how, who's going to deal with them, stuff like that. Who's going to feed them. <laughs> Uh, you know, stuff like that. It, it, it's little things that you don't think about, especially if you in a household with a whole bunch of kids and, 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 you know, in a whole family, if you live with your whole family and somebody gets it, you have to have an area in the house where you want to quarantine. Right. Um, and I, I, I didn't think of that until, you know, when Moan got it, I was like, Oh, wow, wait a minute. We're all, we were all kind of exposed to this. Um, well, because it's hitting home now, you know right, what I mean? It's right. one thing, so it's, it's one thing to it. see it on the news one thing to see it on the news and seeing everybody going, you know, going through it and things, uh, things like that. But it's another thing when it hits home, you know, yeah. um, on the first, the first wave, I had a 36 year old nurse friend of mine. He, he contracted it and he actually passed away from it. Oh, wow. um, you know, he was one of those individuals who was put on a respirator. And let me tell you, do not get on that respirator because that is what is they're finding to be the thing that is really killing people. Ooh. Oh, um, you know, um, because, Again, the virus wants you to sit down. You, now you're putting a respirator on, you know, put, you know, putting a fr- respirator on a person and, um, you know, the, the, the person's now not moving. The lungs aren't really expanding. Um, th- maybe the right temperature, the right setting is not correct. On, a, on I mean, there's so many different things we can get into with it, but 
Um, if you can fight this as much as you can at home, I suggest that you just quarantine and be home. The hospital really is just only going to get you more sick. You know, um, I actually had to go to the hospital, um, the last two weeks I've had, um, stomach, stomach issues that I, I was in so much pain. Like I had no choice and I was like dreading it. They had, the pain was so bad. They had to put me on morphine. Okay. That just to tell you how bad the pain was, but I was dreading even going to the hospital. And now we don't really, and the, and the hospitals don't really have the numbers like they used to. But still, I'm like, that's where all the sick people are. You don't want to be around the sick people, you know? Right. But, yeah. I mean, you're doing you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, Ramon. Like I said, you know, I definitely wish you a fast and speedy recovery and hope that, you know, the pain goes away quickly. Um, and if, like I said, if you can withstand that fever, that's probably the best thing you can do. Yep. You know, that's your body. That's your body's defense. I mean, anytime you have a fever, that is your body's um, antibodies working to fight it. You know, a lot of times, again, we're conditioned to, you know, get the fever and the aches and pains and not feel those things. But those things are there for a purpose. They're, they're all there for a reason, you know, and your body's telling you to rest, you, you know, then rest. Absolutely. All right. So just to segue off of it, because we got we, we kind of ran over time. Um, Fern, since you're already yes. on the mic, um, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, Tell us about your show. What's going on with you? And and, and all right, yeah. So every Thursday from seven to nine, I right. co-host a um, a radio show on Instagram called The Evening Experience. This um, Thursday, we're having Dawn from Invo. Come on, we're pretty oh, excited wow. about that. Yes, we're very excited about that. Um, I'm working on getting Savvy's, you know, uh, little actor actor man on the show with us Lamont. as well. Okay, little so excited about that. I forgot his name. Lamont. Lamont. Um, Lamont Elliott. Lamont, yes. Lamont Elliott. We're please get that getting... right, because I don't want no phone calls, please. I know. I'm sorry. Please. Lamont Elliott. We're working on getting Lamont yep. Elliott on with us as well. Um, and then I'm also executive producing. Um, so the, the Thursday show is like music, you know, um, um, pop culture, you know, things like we have businesses, you know, entrepreneurs and, and things like that. But on um, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, I also executive produce another talk show here on Facebook called Streaming with Swanston. And that is um, the CEO of a startup tech company is the host of the show. And he's pretty much asking other entrepreneurs um, in different, you know, industries like music and um Hollywood and tech, you know, he actually interviewed somebody in, um, who started his own comic book series. Um, you know, he's asking like those thought provoking questions, you know, really getting, um, getting the opportunity to have, uh, people, a lot of the people behind the scenes, you know, a lot of people who worked with some of these like big names that were behind the scenes, he's getting them like, you know, the shine that, you know, they, they really do deserve. So that's pretty exciting as well. And then just, you know, just doing my normal other stuff, you know, working as a nurse, um, doing credit repair, doing, you know, stocks and trades and, you know, getting the bag any which way I can. <laughs> Got you. So um, if we wanted to view those, where, where, where would we go? Like you said. So you on, on Thursday, Facebook. yeah. So Thursday, um, you go to Instagram. It's called The Evening Experience, all one word. Right. Definitely follow us over there. You know, we're uh, we're working great towards show, great show. Thank you. Thank you. We're working to get 10K. Right, we'll, 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 we'll put a link in the bottom on the YouTube version of this. That'll be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's at the evening experience. And then streaming with Swanston is on, like I said, on the weekends. And that's here on Facebook. And uh, again, it's another. And that one, we actually just had someone from Dubai. We had a woman from Dubai. We were interviewing. Um, she just started her co her company. Um, so we have a lot of, um, you know, we have a lot of international, uh, you know, people in, in all the different continents and we're also offering advertising. So it's a great opportunity if you have a business and you want to get global, you know, we can, uh, advertise your, uh, your business on, um, on streaming with Swanston, you know, in the okay. seven different continents. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What? Yeah. So Mr. Hollywood, let's, let's, let's hear about you and, and, and. What you got going on? I see Hollywood Apparel, so so yeah, I, I guess you got a clothing line. <laughs> yeah, so um, like I said, I do have my clothing line. With, once again, that is my baby. I just I just had my first fashion show, and thank the Lord, my the venue was sold out. Everything was great about the uh, with the Hollywood Apparel release. Um, and if anybody wants to see my work, that is www.shophollywoodapparel.com. Um, also, like I was saying earlier, me and my wife have a talk show, um, and we go live every Sunday at 6 p.m. 
and that is basically a regular talk show. Have you ever seen Ellen DeGeneres or any type of talk show like that? That's what I talk show is about. And my wife, she does Netflix reviews. I'm a musician, so I do What's New With Music. If, right. if you don't know, new music drop like every Friday. So I do my review on it. What's good, what's bad, what's trash. And I don't I don't hold back. If it's trash, it's trash. Um, <laughs> and then um, we, it's been COVID, so we really haven't been interviewing people. A lot of people have been wanting us to do virtual interviewing, but I'm going to talk to a management company and see whether or not we're going to uh, tap into that. But we normally interview people and we always play a crazy game. Like like my wife the other day, she slapped me with whipped cream. And and the, like the game was yeah, crazy. And then sometimes she slapped me with she slapped me with flowers sometimes. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Y'all should definitely check it out. Like I said, and, and that's called Live with Hollywood and Brit. Her name is Brit. And that it's the same on Facebook. Facebook is live W Hollywood Brit. And on Instagram it's live W Hollywood Brit. And then um, I'm a barber. I cut here. I've been cutting here for years. Um, I cut some celebrities, some well-known people in the D.C. area. Um, and I, I do a lot of other stuff, like personal training. I do personal training, fitness, things like that. But, yeah, most oh, definitely. And staying safe. Staying, staying out the way. I'm trying to stay as clean as possible. And most definitely, that's, that's very important, staying safe. All right. That's good. good. We'll, again, we'll have the um, links to all of these. Ms. Fern's uh, information. We'll have Hollywood's information also in the links below on the YouTube version of this. Um, hey, so, Savvy, what you got going on? I said, I still, we still working on our um, fashion show um, March the 13th from next year. It got pushed to March the, March the 13th. And I forgot to mention that I started a one-on-one. -on -one. It's called um, Savvy Events Corner, where I interview entertainers, singers, entrepreneurs, um, anybody that want to come on my show. I just sit down and have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I ask a lot of questions. Um, and I do it once a month. I interview a person once a month. And then um, it's shown on our um our YouTube page. It gets up, up uploaded to the um, YouTube page. So right. I'm really excited about that. I supposed to have my second interview this coming um, Sunday. Um, matter of <laughs> fact, they called me today to confirm about the interview. So I'm really excited about the interview. And my thing is, my goal is to give a platform for people um, that needs to be heard. Because a lot of times, like um, Mr. Hollywood saying, we got a lot of people that that's in the background or just don't get that platform because sometimes people don't think that they have that status to be on that show. So mm -hmm. I feel like my show, my one-on-one -on -one is to get people and talk about, you know, their lives and where they're going with their music or whatever they're doing, their fashion, whatever. And mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that. I have, um, when I had my first show, I really had fun with that. So I can't see how, I want to see how that's going to take me in the future. Yeah. And All then, right. you know, what you guys, yeah, well, I'm still here with uh, Trini Spice FM, you know, um, our Caribbean station. And for those of you who just join in the show, I say it every <laughs> every time. We got a free app if you like Caribbean music. It's um, basically you can find us on your your iOS platforms as well as your Google Play. Just look up Trini Spice FM. Um, we're also on your Alexa device where you can uh, basically uh, go into your Alexa skill store and enable the Alexa skill called Trini Spice FM. Um, we play a lot of Caribbean music. We have a lot of Caribbean Christmas music right now. I do have a video out explaining what Parang is. Parang is uh, a mix of Latin fusion, Spanish fusion with, with, with the Caribbean soca and stuff like that. And, and it's mixed in together um, as a, tr it's, it's traditional Christmas music from, from Trinidad, basically. Um, but, and you could always check that out. I, I think I may upload it to this channel, um, to our YouTube channel. So we'll find it out. We'll have links to all of this on the bottom. Moan, I'm going to have you shut it down for us, bro, since you're here. Oh, oh thanks everybody again for the love and support. Uh, second like season, what's it, like the fifth episode, four, fifth episode? Yeah, 26. 26, damn, how about that? <laughs> um, uh, hey, look, tune in to us next week, GVTV, we out, peace. All right. Hi guys, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Yeah.